I have neglected nothing for the welfare of the island. I have robbed myself of rest to contribute to it. I have sacrificed everything for it. At first glance, Toussaint Louverture was an unlikely revolutionary. He was in his fifties and a freed slave when he first turned against his former masters. But within a few years, he'd found worldwide respect and had even written his country's first constitution. The colony of which I was commander enjoyed the greatest tranquility. Agriculture and commerce flourished there. The island had attained a degree of splendour which it had never before seen, and all this, I dare to say it, was my work. He was someone who had a very engaging personality. He was perfectly at home with a wealthy white planter who was born in France, but he could just as easily talk and converse with an African-born slave. Sudhir Hazara Singh is author of Black Spartacus, the epic life oh. of Toussaint Louverture. So Toussaint was a man of exceptional ability, remarkable intelligence, had a phenomenal memory, and it was on that basis that he rose to become the coachman and effectively the right-hand man on the plantation where he grew up. His parents were African-born slaves, but Toussaint had been granted his freedom and worked for a salary on a plantation owned by white French settlers. At the time, Saint-Domingue, modern-day Haiti, was one of the most profitable colonies in the world. It was a place which produced vast quantities of sugar, coffee, cocoa, indigo. Um, it was a place where fabulous fortunes were made by the European settlers who lived there. And it, it also made huge uh, amounts for the French uh, exchequer. It was profitable because the work was all done by slaves. 90% of the population were slaves. Many, first generation, born in Africa and brought across the Atlantic by ship. Letters written home by European visitors show even they were shocked at the treatment of the enslaved people, who at that time were referred to as Negroes. Negroes die daily in chains and under the lash. They are beaten, strangled, burnt to death without any legal formality. The white women are even worse than the men. One of them recently gave a formal dinner. When a dish was burnt, she flew into a rage and ordered her Negro cook thrown into the oven in which the fire was still burning. So this was a truly horrifying system of domination. This included throwing slaves into furnaces, burying them alive, blowing up their bodies with gunpowder, cutting off their limbs. And of course, there was a massive amount of sexual violence against women. Thousands of kilometres away in France, a new vision of a fairer future was being created in the turmoil of the French Revolution. The slaves of Saint-Domingue hoped they too would be granted the equal rights popularised in France, but they were repeatedly denied them. They realised that these rights are not going to be handed over to them. They're going to have to fight for them. In the late 1780s, we think, the senior figures among the enslaved population were starting to meet regularly in the north of Saint-Domingue and planning an uprising. And we believe Toussaint took part in these, in these conversations. The uprising was set for August 1791. It was sanctified at a spiritual ceremony. Uh, where there was probably uh, a number of different religious rituals, but voodoo rituals uh, certainly played an important part. The revolution gets its uh, blessing, and, and the insurrection is launched um, shortly afterwards. It was a very violent insurrection. There are a lot of deaths among the planters. Hundreds of plantations were burnt to the ground and Toussaint's rebels gained more and more territory. Uh, the French authorities send, um, send some troop reinforcements by the end of 1791. After three years, the French troops finally gave in and declared they would abolish slavery in Saint-Domingue. The slave army had won. Toussaint uh, then thinks that, you know, the French Revolution has chosen the right path in the colonies. So he fixes as his own kind of strategy, maintaining an alliance with the French so that the Black Revolution 
will be able to develop under the protection of the French authorities. Um, because, of course, this is still a world in which slavery is regarded as the norm. You know, the Spaniards haven't abolished it. The British haven't uh, uh, abolished it. Nowhere near. In fact, the British had also come to Saint-Domingue in an attempt to seize control of the profitable colony. And Toussaint had another battle on his hands this time fighting on behalf of the French Republic to retain control of Saint-Domingue. Uh, I mean, the British really go all out to try and capture Saint-Domingue uh, after 1793. They spend £10 million, pounds, send in uh, at least 20,000 men, and Toussaint is able to uh, wear them down by a war of attrition. What we would call today psychological warfare, harassing their lines, sending people at the early hours of the morning outside their camps to make a huge amount of noise. After five years, the British gave up. The French made Toussaint deputy governor of the colony. His vision now extended to the whole island of Hispaniola. And in 1801, he successfully invaded the other half, the Spanish-owned colony of Santo Domingo, present-day Dominican Republic and banned slavery there too. By the uh, late 1790s, he's created something that is absolutely unprecedented, a political system in which white people, people of mixed race, and black people are able to live with each other in a state of relative harmony and enjoy the same basic civil and political rights. Meanwhile, in France, Napoleon had come to power and was under pressure to re-establish slavery. In 1802, he sent French troops to Saint-Domingue to restore white rule. Toussaint Louverture was captured and taken to France. Means have been employed against me which are only used against the greatest criminals. Doubtless, I owe this treatment to my colour, but my colour... My colour... Has it hindered me from serving my country with zeal and fidelity? Does the colour of my skin impair my honour and my bravery? Toussaint Louverture died in prison in April 1803. But the struggle in Saint-Domingue continued and Napoleon's troops were defeated just months later by the black former slaves who named their new republic Haiti. Slave owners everywhere came to dread even just the name of Toussaint, but also the name of Haiti. And so Haiti becomes a symbol. In overthrowing me, only the trunk of the tree of Negro liberty has been cut down. Its branches will shoot up again, for its roots are numerous and deep. As a military leader, he was someone who established